You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 6th of December and I'm Kate from Milford. The new COVID-19 variant, Omicron, was a key focus last week, which led to volatility in equity markets throughout the week as market participants tried to understand the impacts of the new variant. Volatility was fueled by mixed messages from Moderna and Pfizer announcements, with Moderna stating that vaccine efficacy would be lower due to the number of spike proteins, whilst Pfizer stated that three shots should provide sufficient protection against the new variant. Ultimately, there is still insufficient data to conclude the virulence of the new variant. The Australian GDP print was better than expected as fiscal stimulus reduced the impacts of lockdowns on households. Australian GDP declined 1.9% quarter on quarter compared to an expected contraction of 2.7%. From a year on year basis, GDP growth slowed from 9.6% to 3.9%, which was above consensus at 3%. Household savings ratio increased from 11.8% to 19.8%, which reflects the impacts of the government's fiscal stimulus measures. This supports the suggestion of a consumption-led rise in economic activity as households draw down savings. Moving to the US, the Fed chair stated it may be appropriate to complete its tapering of asset purchases a few months earlier. In early November, the Fed announced that it planned to complete its asset purchase program in mid-2020. Policymakers next meet in mid-December, where they could decide to accelerate the tapering. Powell also stated that the Fed will no longer characterise high inflation as transitory and that inflation is higher and more persistent than expected. These announcements highlight the Fed has moved from a dovish policy to a hawkish policy. Turning to equity news, Collins Food reported a strong half-year result driven by the performance of KFC Europe. KFC Europe beat expectations as revenue increased 32%, underpinned by strong same-store sales growth of 14.6%. The EBITDA margins returned to peak levels, reporting a 14.7% margin, an increase of 6.2% year-on-year. Overall, the group grew revenue by 8.5% and EBITDA by 13%. Woolworths has bid $1.75 cash per share to acquire 100% of API, which is one of three major pharmaceutical wholesalers in Australia. This represents a 12.9% premium to the price agreed between API and Waste Farmers under the scheme implementation deed announced in early November. Woolworths bid also represents a 53% premium to API's previous close price. The API board has confirmed it will allow Woolworths to undertake due diligence to facilitate a binding offer. However, the West Farmers scheme implementation deed includes a right to match in favour of West Farmers which is exercisable before API enters into any binding agreement with a competing proposal. Rumours spread last week that CSL is in discussions to buy Vifa, which is one of the largest Swiss pharmaceutical companies. On Friday morning, CSL addressed the market by stating that CSL regularly assesses strategic opportunities that can improve its business, improve the health of people around the world and provide value to shareholders, but did not deny nor confirm the rumours. Finally, the Sone conference was held on Friday, which was a one-day conference where international and local fund managers present their exclusive investment ideas and insights in a fast-paced format. Three Aussie stocks were discussed at the conference, being Megaport, Pinnacle and Flat Centre. Looking to the week ahead, the RBA meeting will be held on Tuesday, where the market is expecting interest rates to be held at 0.1%. We can expect Q3 Euro region GDP growth rate data, which is expected to be 2.2% growth quarter on quarter and 3.7% year on year. Later in the week, China will release their November inflation print and the US will release their continuing and initial jobless claims for November. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.